Hi everybody, it's Claire back with another art journal video and in this one I am playing in the large craft journal and I'm using some art foamy stamps. Um, I'm pretty sure they are called something moths and I think they're by KP. Um, so I'm sorry about the angle of the camera, I must have nudged it um, and didn't realise but it does alter in a bit so hang hang in there I'm so sorry it's a bit wonky um, so I'm just pulling some black gesso through the centre of the double page uh, spread and um, I'm just kind of messing that up a little bit so my thinking was that the little butterflies moths sorry are going to be um, in the centre of the page and this is going to draw attention to where they are um, so yeah, that was black gesso and I'm just pulling that through and um, giving it a dry. And then I'm using my little dotty stamp just to kind of soften those edges a little bit. Yeah, don't worry. After this bit, the camera angle, I get it altered. So it's a bit less odd because this is really bizarre. Um, yeah, so using this stamp to do this just softens those edges a bit. And um, I mean, I could go in and stamp it a bit more if I wanted to soften them even more. You could use splatters around there too. That would work just as well. Um, but this is a good first first step, really. Um, so, yeah, just stamping those using black archival ink around the edge of my wiggly line that goes through the centre of my page. So then this is one of the coaster stencils. And here I'm using some carnation from Dina Wakely. Um, this is a really lovely pastel colour and works a bit like it would adding white. It's a great contrast. It's a little bit softer than white, um, but you can see that is already bringing that element of contrast onto the page. So then I am just going back in and just sort of kind of realigning the stencil and adding a bit more stenciling to some of the areas. So then I haven't changed my sponge on the bottom of my blending tool and I've just mixed a bit of blackberry in as well and then I'm going in and adding a bit of blackberry too. So just to kind of um, mix up the colouring, add another um, dimension to the page with the, the extra colour too. And purple is one of those colours that I am always drawn to. I love purples and blues. Um, particularly in my art journaling. When I look through my journals, I've often used those colours so much. Um, and then I'm using the same dotty stamp. This time I'm putting white acrylic paint on there and I'm just stamping that around the edge again, around the stamp, the stenciling and around the edge of that black wiggly line, just working to sort of soften those edges um, and introducing those white dots as well again working on those areas of contrast so this is a piece of card that i had um, and i'd used some leftover paint and just created this sort of rainbow piece these are the little moths i think they're called majestic moths if i'm right i'm not sure actually that might be a scrap fx um stencil um yeah these are the ones from art foamies and i'm using black acrylic paint and i'm using a blending tool just dabbing that paint on and stamping those onto this piece of card so i'd kind of already worked out that they would all fit into the space on this card because i wanted to use it all up um one thing that's really important to remember, as is always the case with any stamp that you use acrylic paint on, is that you must wash them really well afterwards. Um, particularly these art foamies, they are quite absorbent and it would affect how they stamp if you're not careful. So it is worth remembering that it's a good idea to give them a bit of a clean after you've finished. I tend to just use... A baby wipe I just give them a little brush over with that wipe over rather um sorry it's been a long day at work today <laughs> I give them a wipe over and and that tends to do the trick um yeah and that and that's all that's required but it is important that you remember to do that so you can see just applying that paint using the blending tool um you can also put the paint onto a gel plate and then just stamp them onto there and then that picks up the paint quite well. But I think this way you can get a really good layer of paint on your stamp. Make sure that you get a really good um, image transfer. 
So obviously these have all got to be cut out. That's the next thing that I have to do um, because I want them all separate. And it's really interesting to see how they look once they're cut out of this card and how the colours uh, work with those little images. Um, don't worry, I'm not going to make you watch me cut out every one of these. So just cutting out a few, you get the idea, you know how cutting out works. <laughs> Um, and then they're going to be arranged on the page. So once I've done that, then I think about arranging them on the page, collecting up those little scraps of card as well. Really pretty pieces they were. I'm just using a black bend blending tool, sorry, a blending tool with some archival ink. And I'm just adding a bit of a smooshy border around the edge of my page. Um, I can't really explain why I did this just because I like I know what it was um, because I wanted the border to feel more part of the whole page. And I think by pulling that black around the edges, it felt more like it belonged and less like it was just plonked in the centre of the page. That was why I did it. So arranging those little moths like they are crawling around on the page and then I'm going to stick them in place using my clear glue. Any glue would work for this, even double sided tape. It didn't have to be clear glue. It's just happened to be what was next to me on my desk. Um, and I tend to use this one quite a lot. It's a really good one. It's called Collal, um, C-O-L-L-A-L-L. -L -L. Um, and it's a clear glue. It dries clear. It doesn't leave any uh, residue behind. OK, so then because I like to do dots, I'm then going and using a large Posca pen and adding more dots, bigger dots than the ones from my um, little stamp. And I am adding these dots to the areas where the stamping is already. And you can see that brings even more contrast to the page. OK, so I've left this next bit in to show you that things don't always look as straightforward as the YouTube videos might give you the impression. So um, I wanted to write some words on here and this was working quite well. I thought my words could follow the sweepy line that I'd put on my page and then I got to here and I'd run out of space and I'd felt like, oh my gosh, that's so unbalanced. Didn't like it. So before I dried it, I got the baby wipe and wiped it all away. I've sped this bit up actually because this was a bit of slow and you really don't need to watch all that. But anyway, you get the idea. So I wasn't too worried about the fact that I couldn't get rid of all of the lettering because I've already got those different areas of... Uh, stenciling and mark making on the page and then I've just grabbed this uh, stamp set from Darkroom Door and decided I would stamp um, my words onto a piece of cardstock and then cut them out rather than hand write them so I left this bit in so that you can see that um, you know it's okay to make mistakes and <laughs> Um, it really doesn't matter and that if your Posca pen isn't dry and heat set then you can more often than not with a baby wipe or a wet paper towel you can rub it away um, as long as your background is completely dry you won't cause too much damage um, and I think just that whole thing of you know if it doesn't feel right then change it um, and it's not a big deal uh, it really isn't So then I'm just trying to arrange the words on the page. Should I make them follow the pattern? No, I didn't like that. So then I decided that I would pop them on my page like that. So completely different to how it started off when I was writing the words on with the Posca pen. Um, so just be open to those feelings that say to you, no, 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 that's not working. That's not how I wanted it to be. Um, that hasn't quite gone to plan and be prepared to give it a try and try something else. So then the final thing that I do is just to add some um, gloss spray splatters. And I have started using a fan brush for this because when I flick the stem of the gloss spray, it literally goes everywhere. Um, 
And there we are, there's the finished page. So it went through a little bit of a hiccup, but it all worked out in the end. So be willing to change things if it's not going how you thought it was meant to. So thanks for watching. I hope you found some inspiration in this video and I hope to see you again soon.